Hello, welcome or welcome back to the channel. If you're new here, I'm Chiz. My pronouns are they, them, and I do things on here sometimes. Very rarely, actually. Today, I'm going to be showing you how I made this sweater, which is heavily inspired by um, the sweater that Princess Bubblegum wore in like that one episode of Adventure Time. Uh, the color palette is a little bit different. I would say the color palette is more inspired by like Ramona Flowers' like sweater that she wore. But regardless, I really love it. I love the colors. I love the way it turned out. It's got a really cute star on the hoodie part. So if you want to see my process and maybe try it out for yourself, keep watching and I hope that you enjoy the video. So here is the initial swatch that I had made just to make sure that the colors go good together. So I started off with the ribbing and I made it about three and a half inches wide. And I will include the ribbing tutorial that I used in the description of this video. Okay, so I just completed the ribbing for the back panel. I made it to be a little bit more than like my shoulder measurement just so that, I don't know, it kind of slouches over a little bit. Anyways, I'm going to do the back panel and see how I decide to do it. I wanted to kind of do it like PV sweater, just with sort of the color palette of Ramona's. And I also got a 10 millimeter crochet hook. And I got this hook because I'm actually gonna use it for the body and just use the five millimeter, the orange ones. Just gonna use that one for the ribbing because I just want my work to work up faster. I also like tested it out. I tested out this hook. And I like the way the stitches look. This is literally just a half double crochet. So I switched over the hook like right before I was gonna do the slip stitch. And I'm gonna change the color to the purple yarn and then take this like this, put it through, and then I'm gonna just make another one. And then I'll tie this because I'd be tying, I'm sorry, not. Okay, so initially I had tried to use the 10 millimeter hook to work the purple yarn into the blue ribbing but it wasn't working because the hook was too big and the holes were too small. So I switched over to the five millimeter hook to create like sort of a mesh stitch. I did the V stitch. I'll drop a tutorial for it below um, in the description, but I used the V stitch to create sort of bigger holes so the 10 millimeter hook could fit through. So this is what that looks like. And the V stitch is just double crochets, just like spaced out differently. And then after that, I used the 10 millimeter hook and I just worked half double crochets into each of those stitches. And I continued that for the rest of the back panel. And just like I wanted, it worked up quickly and it wasn't too like holy because I didn't want it to be like mesh, but I wanted it to work up fast. And I think the 10 millimeter uh, worked perfectly. This yarn was rated for 4.5 millimeter hook. So you can use this as a reference if you want to do the same thing that I did. I am popping in from the time lapse to remind you guys to stretch your hands, take a break. If you are crocheting, I know, I know, I understand wanting to just keep working, but it's really important to take care of your hands. There are these stretches. It is the linked TikTok video in the description for the stretches that help prevent carpal tunnel. So yeah, please check it out for the health of your hands because I had a hand injury recently and it was the worst. Anyways, I'm just continuing with these half double crochets and honestly, it is not super duper interesting. So I'm going to skip forward to where I changed the color. So it's getting dark. Um, The color looks a bit weird, but I worked up like this much. Um, This amounts to... 11 inches total so i'm going to change the color so as you can see me here i switched to the orange hook and i'm doing those same v stitches that i did at the bottom where the purple connected to the ribbing so i'm doing the v stitches for the blue just for some variety and i'm also like trying to figure out what to do so this back panel was more of like a test and I'm really happy I did it like this because it still allowed me to make progress while also testing. And it wasn't even that bad. So I was trying to experiment with like how I wanted the stripes to be. If I wanted a solid band of the pink slash magenta color 
in the middle or if I wanted to do like random colored stripes. So I tried out the random colored stripes and I found out I actually would like just a solid band for the color change, but I didn't like undo any of my work or anything like that. And since it's the back panel, it's fine. And also it's still like, you know, it's still fine. Okay, so it is the morning of um, like midnight crocheting madness. But I finished my back panel. It looks like this. I'm not sure if I love it, but honestly, I might do the front panels a different way. And I'm just gonna leave this like this because it's the back. But yeah, I'm working on the ribbing for the front panel. It's 15 stitches wide. I think I should be able to do the front panels today. So my first order of business was doing the ribbing and I did the ribbing for two of the front panels at once just because I kind of wanted to not have to deal with it because ribbing is the most annoying and the slowest part. But um, it was a really good idea and I definitely recommend doing all your ribbing in the beginning because it would just make everything so much easier. Anyways, um, thankfully due to the back panel, I knew exactly what to do. Um, I switched to my five millimeter hook to join it doing the V stitches. Um, and thankfully I realized that it would be helpful to actually show how I do it. So I would chain one and then go into like the opening that made the most sense um but i would always do the same one so for the ribbing you know how it's like one's in and one's out so if i'm doing the out ones i would always go into the out one and then i would do my v-stitch which is double crochet chain one double crochet into the same stitch and then i would chain one again and then go to the next one, so the next outie or the next innie, and do the same thing. Then at the end of the row, I change to my 10 millimeter hook and I half double crochet into um, in between the V's and then in between the V's, if that makes sense, into every possible hole. That's how I do it. And there was no like formula or any rhyme or reason to this, which is why I love crochet so much. So when it came time to change the colors on the front panels, I did two rows of the V-stitching in blue. Also, I figured out a better way to change the colors. So when you get to the end of your row, which for me would just be by pulling through, I snip, leaving off a really long tail, so about 12 inches or so. And then I get the new color yarn and I also switch out my hook to the 10 millimeter because we're not doing any more of the V stitches. So I switch to the 10 millimeter and grab my new color, which is the magenta. And then I pull right through and I do a chain. So I pull through again, essentially. And I tighten, like I pull on both of the colors really tight. And also I started tying it. So doing like a little double knot and that I find really secures it into place. Uh, so yeah, I just continued doing my half double crochets like normal. And I think I did five rows of this and then two more rows of the blue V stitches and then back to the purple. So I finished one front panel and then I started working on the other. I wasn't really counting rows. I was just holding it up to the other one to make sure that it was pretty even. And then now we move on to the sleeves. I did write down a pattern for this one as I was doing it, um, just so I could make the other sleeve equal as well and to help you guys. So I will write the pattern like on the screen and you can screenshot it if you wanna use it. But I did do like the V stitch pattern for the sleeve like differently than I did for the panels because I wanted the sleeves to be like Kind of oversized and so I needed to like do an increase so uh, previously I had done the V stitch like double crochet into one uh, chain one double crochet into the same one chain one again and then do the same V into the next like any or outie whichever one that you're doing but for this one I decided to chain two in between each of the sets of V's 
just so I can have more space in there. And um, when I eventually switched to the 10 millimeter hook, I did two half double crochets into the space between each set of these because I chained two. So I would do two half double crochets just to achieve an increase that wasn't too drastic. And this is what it ended up looking like. As you can see, the two sleeves are lighting up pretty good. And this is exactly what I wanted. Like they line up almost perfectly. And I'm really happy about that. So the pattern stops after this point, but then after this, I didn't really do any increases or anything. I was also working on both of the sleeves at the same time, unlike the front panels where I worked on one and then I worked on the other one after. I was working on them at the same time and matching them up. And I think that was the right move because I tend to forget and I hate counting stitches. And the way I end the rows on the V is I just pick the last stitch and I just do like a regular double crochet. Sometimes I chain one, sometimes I chain two. Whatever makes it feel like it's in a more relaxed position is what I'll do. Um, so it was like kind of off of feel, you know. But again, that's the awesome thing about crochet. Like even if you don't get something exactly the way that I like explained it or you don't do it exactly the way I did it it's still gonna work out and you're still gonna have your garment and it's still gonna be fine like you'll figure it out that's the thing about crochet you'll figure it out and here I am showing that color change one more time and the way I go from the half double crochets to the v stitches but if you want me specifically to explain anything just let me know in the comments I'll make like a shorts video or just anything relating to how I did it in this project like sometimes you don't figure it out you know I've had a lot of experience crocheting so maybe I'm clouded by my own experience but if you need anything specifically like spelled out more let me know in the comments I'll be happy to make a shorts video or just a short YouTube video you know so I have officially finished the bulk of my sweater this is the back panel. This is just a swatch. These are the front panels. One, two. And these are the sleeves that are going to be in half, of course. I'm only going to attach like half of this up to here. And also the same thing on this side so that we can make room for the hoodie. Now, I don't know about you guys, but honestly, sewing the pieces together for me is the funnest part of making a garment like this. Let me know what you guys think, but I really love sewing pieces together. I know some people dislike it. Okay, hello, beautiful people. I can't wait to show you a jacket update. So I sewed the pieces together, and this is what we have so far. I'm gonna try it on. Like, I love the cuff of the sleeves. They were perfect. And I like the way it becomes like oversized and stuff. This portion is what worries me a bit. Like, so the hoodie's gonna go over here. And I'm a bit worried that the hoodie's gonna be too big. But I'm not really sure what I can do about that. Like, I can close off some more of these stitches, which like, I might do. Maybe a couple more on each side. And then the hoodie is going to be like that. And then there's also going to be like blue trim, like blue ribbon going all the way around up the hoodie. So I feel like the hoodie is going to be a bit big. Yeah, I think I'll just go with that, close it off to about here and maybe about here. And then I'll start on the hoodie and I'll show you guys how the hoodie is. But yeah, so far so great. I'm also going to put a star on the hood the back and I'm going to show you like the pattern that I used and I don't remember where I got it. I literally screenshotted it and posted it on my Finsta and that's where I got it from. Like I did that in October of 2022. Okay so I pulled up the star pattern right in front of me and I'm going to use it as we go. Let's start the hoodie. This is the general anatomy and we're going to start from here and we're just going to continue our regular stitches all the way around. So I'll show you. So we're going to start from this corner. Um, I literally put it into whichever one seems like it's the right one. And then I leave, I like to leave a fairly long tail, like six, eight inches, I would say. And so I pull it through, chain, 
and then I drag it all the way down and then I'm ready to continue. So we're just gonna keep doing the same stitch that we did. And if you are planning to do the star or any other shape that needs to be centered, you would need to find the middle part of your back panel. And the way that I did it was just by like counting the stitches until my fingers met in the middle. And then I marked it with a contrasting color string so I know which one is my center stitch. So when we're starting the star, so the star goes from the center, you have one, two, three, four blocks. So we're gonna go four blocks from the center. So we're gonna start a star one, two, three, four. So this is where we're gonna change the color on four away from the center. Correction, it should actually be changing the color like five away. There were four stitches in between and I misinterpreted that. But I did go back and change it and I'm going to show me changing the color one time because it's kind of the same thing over and over and I don't want this video to get too long. So this is this. Normally I would go like this and continue on. But to change the color, I'm going to pull through this with our new color. And then I'm going to go to the next one. And that is our color change. So I'm gonna cut this off, leaving a fairly long tail. And then we're gonna go back to the purple. So there's a lot of uh, long tails here, but it's fine. And then we're just gonna continue normally up until we reach our second color change. So this is what the first row is looking like. I tied everything up, ooh, except for this one. I'm trying to tie it up as I go just so that, you know, oh, I did do it. I try to tie it up as I go just so that in the end, I'll know that I can cut everything if I need to. But this is what it looks like, these two things, and it's looking promising. I'm really excited. So yeah, for this star, I literally had my iPad right in front of me and I was just following the pattern. It's honestly pretty easy to follow, so I didn't really show it too much. But yeah, remember to stretch your hands, which I'm doing. And you can do any pattern you want. Um, I know there's an app that makes the little grid for you. So you can do like any shape, like a heart or stripes or anything. So my hood actually ended up being too small. Luckily, this is crochet. So the way the hood's gonna work is I'm gonna sew these two points together and it's gonna be like this. So my hood is too small. On this side, it's, a, it's better. But on this side, it's small. I added a few more lines of crochet. As you can see, this one's facing a different direction. And I'll show you how I did that. So in case you make your hood too small, I guess this is how you fix it. This is how I'm fixing it. I hope that it works. Okay, so this is kind of where I started from. I started from... I just attach it to where my hood, like, started. Which is, like aligning with this seam right here but you know how we left it open so it's aligning with this seam right here it doesn't even have to be exact but i put it through here i pull through and then i chain i pull on it and then i chain again and then i basically just half double crochet and i'm going to do this half double crochet all the way up to here. I'm not gonna go this way. I'm just gonna go all the way up to here and I'm going to expand it like three rows on each side. On this side, I already did two rows, but I think I'll do one more and then, yeah. Okay, Um, sweater progress. This is the side that has three rows. This side only has two. Um, I don't know which one I like more, but I think the side with two is better. So I might just leave it at two. Yeah, I'm probably gonna take off this extra row. So this two places together, and then I'm gonna call it a day, yeah. So I started the ribbing last night and I tried to film it, but the lighting was really bad and I was in and out of frame for like a lot of it. But the way that I did the ribbing, it was really close to what was shown in this video, how to add ribbing to a beanie. So I will link it in the description but i did something a little bit different so once i had finished like 
doing my stitches into the back loop of my ribbing portion, which was three stitches. When I attached it back to the sweater portion, so the purple in this case, I did my slip stitch into the next two like holes of the purple, um, which is a little different from what's in the video. And that's because when I did it exactly the way that it was shown in the video, it kind of started to ruffle up a little bit. And I think it's because we're working sort of into the side of the stitches versus working into the bottom. But I found that if I do it this way, it just helps it lay more flat, which is what I was going for. I'm not sure if I'm explaining that in like a good way. So let me know if you want me to like just make a separate video that's just the ribbing. The last-ish step is to attach the zipper, which I'm going to do with my sewing machine. Okay, so the zipper was not a good idea. Yeah, it looks cute though, if it would work, but it warped it. I think it was stretching. But that's okay, I honestly just like took out the zipper with an X-Acto knife. Like, I cut the threads, I didn't ruin the zipper. But what I'm doing now is since the inside of my hoodie, which is where the star is, since the inside is like looking kind of ugly when I flip my hoodie over, like when I'm not wearing it, I'm just making sure these are tied really tight and cutting them short. And since I'm still unhappy with the hoodie because I don't like the way it sits over there, so I'm going to fold it in on itself and literally just sew it with like a tapestry needle. There were also a few decorative things that I did, so I made four little stars following this tutorial, which I will link. But I made four little stars and I sewed two of them together. I also crocheted a little string. It's just chain and then one row of half double crochet, which I've been doing. And then I attached the little stars to, um... <laughs> I uh, attached the little stars to the string with no help of this cat who is playing with my hair. Look at him. He was pulling my hair so hard. He was like playing with the yarn and I was like, no, go away. So he started playing with my hair. But look at him. He's so cute though. Anyways, with that, I am ready to show you guys the result. And drum roll, please. This is the jacket. I am in love with it. I feel like I don't think I would have changed anything about it. Um, maybe the way I did the hood, obviously, because I made some mistakes. I think eventually I want to put buttons in the front just so I have the option to close it off. But the zipper wasn't really working out. But it's so adorable. Look at the little stars on the string. I think that was such a nice touch and it really ties in the star on the hood. But yeah, I'm really happy with it and I can't wait to make more jackets in the future. As always, thank you so, so much for watching. If you made it to the end of this video comment star emoji is that too on the nose anyways thank you again for watching and i will see you in the next one Bye bye